Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger Militia, and today's video we're going to find the best engine for this Ferrari F40 and put it to the test on the track, the dirt, the drag strip, and the drift sections. Let's go! I truly am thankful for everyone who has decided to click on this video. I appreciate all the growth this channel is experiencing, and it's because of all of you guys. Also, let's raise a barks to all the subs. Thanks for coming back. Also, hit me up on Instagram. I actually read all of my DMs and comments, so don't hesitate to send me a message or get in on my monthly IG giveaways. Okay, I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with these build videos. If you are, you can skip to 140. But for the people who are not, here's how these videos go. I test each engine for the car on the day races Arian and Aardvark with the same build to find the fastest engine first. During the testing, I record the final race time and compare it to the other engines for that car. I only record a time if the race was super clean. I've raced 400 times or more on both of these courses, so I know them like the back of my hand. If I make a driving mistake, I restart the race immediately and throw that time out. Consistency and accuracy are definitely my top two priorities. After I find the fastest engine, I optimize it for each type of racing this game offers. Track, drag, drift, and dirt. I also have my personal top 20 for these two test courses so that we can compare the race times with the rest of the cars that I've tested to see how each car stacks up in the grand scheme of things. The idea is to have some sort of foundation to rank the cars from fastest to slowest. Alright, first of all, can we just admire the design of this car for a moment? I don't know if it's because I was born in 1987, or if I'm just being a Ferrari fanboy, but the style of this car is just so attractive. Hey, cool car, man! Cool car, man! What is that, Ferrari? So because I love the look so much, I decided to leave the design alone and race it as is. No customizations. Alright, enough oogling. This F40 has 8 engine offerings, 4 of which were fast and 4 of which were very fast. This car moves. I was pleasantly surprised to see that this car posts times close to the top cars in the game. On Arian, its top four times were all under 254, which on any given race, depending on driver's skill level, keeps up with the RSR, the F1, and the 4 GT. Not so bad company. The fastest time I was able to post with the standard track build was 251.5. If you don't know what the standard track build is, it goes like this. Ultimate plus everything, dual turbo, 5x3 pound NOS, highest tier track parts on the rest of the car, and no adjustments to the live tuning. This is the setup I use for all my tests so that it's consistent across the, all of the cars and engines that I test. Anyways, without optimizing the car's tires or live tuning, it snags the second fastest time on this course, losing only to the McLaren F1. The engine that performed the best was the 591 horsepower 4.4 liter V8. Moving on to Aardvark, I noticed the times were very consistent. The engines performed in almost the same order as they did on Arian, with once again the 591 horsepower 4.4 liter V8 posting the fastest time. I was able to run a 429.1, which is good enough to earn a place in the top 4 for that track. Again, it's behind the McLaren F1, but it's very close. This car is absolutely one of the fastest cars in the game. Now that we know which engine runs the fastest, let's go ahead and try to optimize it for the track. I tested the race tires instead of the track tires and I was able to run a second faster on Arian, 250.5, which is almost tied with the McLaren F1 for my fastest time on this course ever. This is pretty incredible. Race tires are definitely better for a track application on this car. At this point, I don't think I can run a faster time on this course, even if I adjusted the live tuning settings. I do not want steering sensitivity changed, it feels perfect in the center, and the downforce is exactly where I would want it. I feel like I have enough traction coming out of the corners, and it's light enough to slide the rear end going into them. Not everyone races like this, but for my style of driving, this happens to be the best for me. If the rear end feels too heavy for you, decrease the downforce. If the car slides too much for your taste, increase the downforce. Traction control off and drift style gas is perfect. So my final track setup looks like this. 4.4 liter V8 engine, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, 5x3 pound NOS, track suspension, elite brakes, elite race tires, elite plus clutch, super plus gearbox, and super track differential. Moving on to the drag strip. 
Well, there's no drag strip in Need for Speed Heat, but we do like to run pulls on the racetrack. To build this into a drag car, I start with the fastest engine track build and then swap tires and gearboxes until I find the fastest quarter mile time in the live tuning. In the case of the F40, I was able to get the quarter mile time down to 8.47 with the drag tires and six speed gearbox. This was the fastest time I could get it to post and the car does do wheel stands, especially when you hit the nitrous. So my complete drag build looks like this. Again, 4.4 liter V8 engine, ultimate plus everything on the engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, one by 15 pound NOS because you only need one long spray for a quarter mile. And I know some people do not do quarter miles with NOS, but in this case, I would run it just in case. Track suspension, elite brakes, elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, super plus gearbox and super track differential. Let's go ahead and move on to the drift setup. This was super challenging. This Ferrari did not want to drift at all, but I did find a setup that worked okay. If what you're after is high scores for all of the drift sections in the game, I'd say move on to a different car. The RX-7, the Evo 9, whatever really suits you, but this car does not handle the drift well. That being said, my drift setup for this F40 does allow you to drift and control it, but it doesn't allow for some of the higher scores in the game. It looks like this. 4.4 liter V8 engine again, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo. NOS is not important, but the pro drift suspension is elite brakes, elite drift tires, elite plus clutch, super plus gearbox, and the most important part of the build, the sport drift differential. Without the sport drift differential, and keep in mind it is the sport, not the pro, it makes a huge difference. You have to have this sport drift differential in order for you to feel like you're actually drifting and controlling the car. And lastly, I tried this track car in the dirt, and let's just say the performance was absolutely horrible. I guess this is to be expected. This is a track car all the way. To test this though, I did use the before mentioned fastest engine with the rally suspension, off-road tires, and rally differential. The car has plenty of power, but it lost a lot of time sliding around trying to make the turns. It's a below average off-road car at best, and on the races I tested it on, it posted a 156.4 and a 322.7, which combined puts it in fourth place for the cars that I've tested for off-road. Again, the build looked like this. Same engine, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, five by three pound NOS, super rally suspension, elite brakes, elite off-road tires, elite plus clutch, Super Plus Gearbox and Super Rally Differential. All right, to sum it up, the Ferrari F40 is a poor drift and dirt car, but it does really well in track and drag applications. I was surprised to find out that it almost snagged the number one spot away from its McLaren competitor, the F1 at Arian. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this F40 is definitely capable of keeping up with the top cars in the game, including the RSR, the F1, and the Ford GT. Now, if your skill level as a driver is not as good as someone who is driving the RSR, it's gonna be very tough to beat. The RSR is a super powerful car, and so is the F1. Ultimately, these cars are all really, really close, and I can't really say that one is better than the other. For me, I drive the F1 faster than the other three cars. However, that might not be the case for everyone else. I would say try the RSR, the F1, and the Ford GT, and this F40 and see how you drive these cars. One of them might be faster for you because you drive in a way that closely matches up with the car's handling characteristics. All right, hopefully this has helped you in some way as that is always my goal. I know other people have sort of moved on from the game, but my plan is to continue testing and making Need for Speed Heat content. Thank you so much for watching, Trigger out.